once you've got your final tree out of tree annotator then you can actually view it using fig tree so i have downloaded fig tree if i go to the fig tree folder i can open the java program just by double clicking on it so i want to open the file that i've just made so if i'm in the h5n8 directory the one that i got at the end was called coding aligned final dot tree i do open so that's open the tree and as you can see at the minute it's a bit of a mess it's a bit difficult for you to uh, read things the first thing you can do is expand the tree which will move it expand it height ways and this allows me now to see the names of the sequences so they're not overlapping with one another I can see one clear cluster here or also known as a clade I can see another big cluster here with maybe one on the outside of that cluster and then I can see two more clusters down here so here's one that is a very small one here so probably I've got three or four clusters and this big one I might be able to find some more detail yes I can so this one here which is separate to the one below it so looking at the sequences like this is not very uh, easy to understand things and if you go to the bottom I've got a scale here and that is actually in years because beast can be used to calculate the time to the most recent common ancestor so it's got a scale bar but I don't really want that I want a scale axis so that's better so it's got the origin of the sequences is zero and then the most recent one is 70 years later again that's not really useful so if I go to time scale I want to put in the time of the most recent sequence and the most recent sequence I can see here is 2015 there are no others there the 2014 so I want to offset it by 2015 years so now if I've offset it by 2015 my axis has gone all funny but if I go to the scale axis and I reverse the axis now I have 2015 in the right position and I can look back in time to when all of the sequences diverge from each other in the most recent common ancestor so this suggests the most recent common ancestor was in the 1950s now this has got no bootstrap values on it now a beast tree doesn't really have bootstraps it has as I said these probabilities that it combines together to make the tree the probability of finding that tree in multiple things so this is called the posterior so what you can do is label each one of these branch points with the posterior probability so if you go here and you go to node labels and you go down and you don't do ages because that's going to tell you which year so that's going to say 1979 or whatever else you want to change it to posterior so this gives you something which is similar to the bootstrap so one is the same as 100% bootstrap and the larger the number the more likely that is to appear within the tree sometimes it's very small sometimes it is exactly one so that's good another thing that you can do is you can work out the confidence intervals for each of these ages for the age of each of those most recent common ancestor splits so to do this you want to put on what are called node bars go to node bars and you display the 95% HPD so it's the probability uh, distribution so it's not completely a confidence interval because this is something more complicated called a Bayesian method but it is analogous to so this gives you an idea about how reliable each of those times for divergence between the sequences are 
So as you look back in time, the results get worse. We've got lots of information. You've got very narrow HPDs. Where you've got less information, you've got wider HPDs. So this means you're less, you have a less reliable dating. So it suggests that within this particular cluster, that these two sequences separated from each other around about 2004, but it could be as early as 2002 or as late as 2006. And similarly here, it's anywhere between 1992 and, no, sorry, 19. 86 or 7 sorry and 1993 if you go back to that most recent common ancestor of all of them so on average the median is around 1950 but it could be as late as 1960 or it might be earlier and 1940 or 1945 that would be interesting because something happened in 1945 which would suggest why this has got a very good chance of that being the event that spread the common ancestry because this cluster here are isolated h5s that are only found in the north america and the second world war would provide a very good event for distributing flew across the world and that's probably the last time that there was a major movement of the populations which allowed the circulation of this H5, this avian influenza because after that we'd have had quite carefully regulated trade post-war. This is a much more complete tree so you can now save this, file, save as now you need to, whoops, let's do that again. It's not file space, save as, it's export trees. You want to export it as a Nexus file and you want to sa save it as currently displayed because otherwise you'll lose all those things that you've just done to add all these annotations and things. Press OK. I usually give this a new file name, so instead of calling it final tree, I add annotated.tree so that I know that that's got all the annotations involving the posterior probabilities and these sort of confidence intervals for the ages. So that's a fairly complete tree. You can do some more editing on this if you want to. Change colors, change font sizes. Uh, you can do all sorts of things to do with curvature of the uh, connections. You can do things to do with aligning the tip labels to get them separated from those numbers. That perhaps looks nicer. In this case, it makes it much less cluttered you can actually switch the tip labels off and therefore just have a tree which shows you all of the numbers but it doesn't tell you any of the names at all. I'll put those back on. You can put different shapes on the tips so you can move them to dots or you can change that to uh, rectangles or diamonds or whatever else you want to do. There's lots of things you can do. You can also collapse parts of the tree if you think they're redundant. So for example, this cluster here, they're all very similar to one another. So what I can do is collapse it. And then I end up with a triangle representing all of those sequences compo compiled into one. So you can use that to edit the tree to make it easier to look at, especially when you've got lots of things which are very close to each other. Probably I don't want to do that. So if I click on the collapse again, it expands it again. You can highlight areas, you can color areas, you can annotate areas, you can do all sorts of things 
in editing your tree to make it easier for other people to understand? <laughs>